Unity just revealed their 2025 roadmap at GDC, and it, it looks like we're getting a whole lot of goodies with Unity 6.1. And sorry for not getting this out earlier, I'm in the middle of moving and my life is a bit chaotic right now. Plus, a few fun features to look forward to with the upcoming Unity 6. Well, X, so that could be any version like 0 0.2, 3, 4, we're not sure yet until they, well, officially announce which one it's going to be with, but we have those things to look forward to. Hey everyone, it's Fistful of Shrimp. If you don't know me, I make Unity tutorial videos primarily focused in VR, but I like to dabble in everything and it's good to meet you. Yesterday, Unity shared their vision for their future at GDC and what they're adding to all the future versions of Unity, well, 6.X and on might actually be more exciting for our everyday development. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the most important updates that I like from Unity's roadmap that might directly impact you, whether it's going to be your workflow or the performance you get to enjoy in 2025. I'll cover the main areas, the core improvements coming to Unity 6.1, and the new developer tools that will save you some time, as well as the major XR developments that are coming. And finally, I'll be sharing what Unity's future roadmap looks like for any version past 6.1. So yeah, 6.2, 3, 4. We're not sure. They're just calling it 6.x at this time. Whether you're building mobile games, PC titles, or VR experiences, there's something in this roadmap that's going to make your development life a little easier. So let's dive in and see what Unity has in store for us. Starting off, I want to talk about the core improvements coming to Unity 6.1 that are going to speed up workflows and also boost some performance for all developers. Unity 6.1 is still in beta, but it should be releasing here soon or so they say, and it's going to be packed with improvements that almost touch every aspect of development. Unity 6.1 is introducing WebGPU graphics API integration, which is a pretty big deal for browser-based performance. If you want to see what this functionality will enable, Project Prismatic is a pretty impressive showcase of this technology. They're also improving support from Meta's Instant Games platform, so games that are playable through Facebook or Messenger. Not my cup of tea, but I'm sure someone out there is going to appreciate that. Next up, they're also improving the onboarding experience with profile configurations. So this means you'll finally have access to pre-configured settings and recommended packages packages right from the start. Unity is adding enhanced settings overrides for profiles, letting you configure graphic settings, quality levels, and renderer settings all in one place. A huge time saver if you've ever had to run around and do all these adjustments in any new project. For PC and console developers, we are getting some direct X12 multi-threading improvements, which will provide reduced stuttering at runtime and better CPU performance compared to direct X11. Not bad. They're also working on ray tracing performance using solid angle cooling to help reduce RTAS processing times by up to 60%, which is great news for developers pushing for more visual fidelity. Graphics performance is also getting several significant boosts in 6.1. Variable rate shading allows selective shading at different rates to improve GPU efficiency. It's supported across Vulkan, DirectX 12, and the PlayStation 5 Pro, giving you more control over where to allocate your rendering resources. So if you don't have a PlayStation 5 Pro, I guess they're out of luck. I mean, honestly, I haven't owned a console in years. Additionally, Deferred Plus for URP is offering more real-time lights, GPU resident drawer capability, and optimized deferred rendering for mobile. I have always loved the idea of Deferred Plus, but sadly, as a VR developer, that is not in the cards for me. So one cool thing they mentioned is a change in build optimization. Unity claims that the total build times on Windows that previously took about 64 minutes, you can see here, is now taking just about 35 minutes. That is almost your time chopped in half. Now, this is for a specific build between fog variants and dynamic branching fog. So obviously, this is for builds that have fog capabilities that you want to put in your game, which is a bit niche. But you know what? Honestly, if you want to have fog in your games, chopping your total shader build time in half is not a bad thing. When they were talking about their future outlook previously, they were talking about making optimizations to the engine and improving things across the board. I think this is a point for Unity, showing that they are working to make the engine more efficient, just like they promised. While those core improvements are impressive, Unity is introducing some fantastic new developer tools that could also help your workflow. So let's see what is coming. Now, you might think this is silly, but I'm excited about it because I wanted to do a tutorial on it, but 
since it doesn't have world space capabilities, I can't use it in VR. So what I'm talking about is the UI toolkit. And they're saying this is coming in Unity 6.x, so who knows which version it will come out in, but the UI toolkit will finally be deployable in world space. So this is huge for all developers, but especially anyone working with 3D interfaces or an XR. The new UI toolkit is not only bringing world space functionality, but it's also full render chain integration with support for custom shaders, vector graphics, and support for scalable UI elements. Oh, and also a native screen reader capability for better accessibility. So they're covering a lot with this new toolkit. It's a pretty big overhaul of the whole system. Unity is also planning on improving the animation workflows. They're promising to make animations much less painful with the new system that offers better performance from the jobs and burst without requiring entities workflows. This should give you more flexibility on how you create and implement animations while maintaining high performance. For collaboration and multiplayer development, Unity 6.0 has already introduced the multi Multiplayer Center, which offers a streamlined approach to building multiplayer games. You just answer a few questions and Unity will make some recommendations on what your project needs should be. One particularly useful feature is the multiplayer play mode, which allows you to spawn up to four different instances of your game while in play mode to test out multiplayer functionality without building separate clients. If you don't think that's cool or useful, well, I'm going to say you're a greedy goose, but you know what? I love you anyways, Hong Kong. Now I'm going to transition a portion that I've been focused on for a while, the XR development tools that are coming to Unity. So kicking things off, let's start talking about how they are integrating with Android XR. If you don't know what Android XR is, remember how Meta was like, oh, we're going to make our own operating system and everyone should just trust us and just use our operating system. Well, Google said no. So we have Android XR and Unity is teaming up with Google to build support for Google's entry into spatial computing, which, you know, we is called Android XR. This collaboration will include AR Foundation and the XR Interaction Toolkit support. It'll also be compatible with Unity's XR templates and a dedicated Android XR profile to streamline development. It'll have uh, technical features to include fixed and eye gaze foveated rendering. Did I get it right this time, internet? Which should significantly improve performance on the Android XR devices. For anyone who likes developing for the Meta Quest, because, well, they dominate the VR market, so you should if you're in VR development. We are getting a bunch of goodies in 6.1. Graphics-wise, we're getting MVPVV and also App Space Warp. If you don't know what App Space Warp is, it's a technique that is used for the MetaQuest that enables higher performance for your VR applications. So, I mean, I guess the best way of describing it is kind of like NVIDIA's DLSS, where you're doing kind of lower rendering and resolution frame rates, and then you upscale it and kind of interpolate. So essentially you would, you know, render your frame rates down to like 36 FPS and then it would interpolate and generate new frame rates in between. And then that would boost it back up to 72 frames per second, which you need if you don't want to make your users sick. So yeah, yeah, like I said, uh, kind of similar to NVIDIA's DLSS, but yeah, there, there are key differences, but it's a similar technique and it allows you to squeak out even more out of that tiny, tiny headset. We get per pass foveation, which can improve performance as well. So with uh, things like space warp and per pass foveation, you will get something like a 45% increase in performance. And even better, space warp is now compatible with custom shaders. So you can, so however you have your custom shaders working, you can now take advantage of them using that frame interpolation. For mixed reality, specifically Unity is getting improvement to occlusion for more seamless blending of digital content in the physical world. Uh, I wouldn't say it was seamless looking at the little demo that they had there. But you know what? I mean, honestly, it's pretty impressive for a standalone device that is projecting things out into the real world and then having to interpret that. Look, as long as it's not lagging, we're making progress. I'm a big fan. They're also introducing fully boundaryless experiences, which should enable more immersive mixed reality applications without requiring a defined area of play. Another welcome addition to Quest developers is a proper meta Quest platform build profile. This is 
is one thing I've been looking for for a very long time. If you've ever struggled with the Android build manifest when uploading to the MetaQuest Developer Hub, this should hopefully make our lives easier by providing optimized defaults. I hope that this build profile offers some kind of customizing with the Android build manifest. I'm very tired of having to open it up and do it myself, and I know a lot of users do struggle with that. Another exciting developer for multiplayer XR is the multiplayer mixed reality template. This template allows you to jumpstart the creation of mixed reality multiplayer experiences, which when it comes to VR, multiplayer seems to be a big hit. So this might also translate into mixed reality as well. We are also getting shared persistent anchors. So this means you'll be able to place virtual objects in the real world and other users will see those objects in the exact same physical location, which seems pretty critical when you're creating like a multi-user multiplayer mixed reality application. So now that we've covered what's coming soon to Unity 6.1 and some things with Unity 6.x and X our development specifically, let's look ahead to the future. What does Unity see in the future? So, you know, all those 6.Xs and maybe even 7. So looking to the future of graphics in Unity, there are some major architectural changes on the horizon, which they've announced before, and this is where they want to go towards and unify. Unity is working on consolidating ECS workflows to make the entity component system accessible for all developers, not just those building high performance games. The goal is to make ECS a core part of Unity rather than just like an add-on package. And that does sound really nice. If they can pull it off, I'm going to be a big fan. Now, I've seen some comments mention this before and complain about it. They are updating to .NET Core CLR and also the latest .NET versions. This, of course, will bring Unity's C-sharp implementation up to date with modern standards, offering better performance, improved garbage collection, and also access to the latest language features. One thing coming in the future, it's just slapped with a 6.x, but I'm looking forward to it. I think this is very cool technology is the mesh LOD generation feature. So the idea behind this tool is it will automatically generate multiple levels of details of your meshes and it should save you a significant amount of time because you're not having to create all of those individual level of detail meshes and then also improve performance without manually creating all those LODs. Unity is also doing more with their AI integration. You can have things that you would expect like building out the functionality to help with automating tedious tasks or repetitive operations. The AI will also have context for your specific projects, giving you answers related to your questions with that context in mind. It will have, I'm imagining a coding assistant as well, which with that coding assistant, you can finally get down on that vibe coding that all the kids are talking about. They're also going to look into doing more asset generation. So things like generating sounds, sprites, and eventually also 3D models. And, you know, with AI, I found it to be very good for prototyping and getting things out, but I don't know if I'd ever use it in a finished product. But I do appreciate having some of this functionality built in and explored. Now, I do think some of this functionality will be nice for rapid prototyping. But yeah, that's, that's you know, that's normal AI stuff. A they're doing AI, everyone. Now, one thing that I found to be very cool that they mentioned is when they were talking about multiplayer center, they said they took feedback from users and got a pretty cool idea, which is to build it out even more and offer something called Project Center. So Unity is planning on expanding the concept of the multiplayer center. And in the Project Center, it is going to be more of a comprehensive like project itemization system where you would again answer some questions, say where you're trying to build, and then it's going to offer widgets, packages, or other components that you'll want to have in your game to get started building the project that you're trying to build in the first place. So yeah, I love this. It sounds like they are listening to user feedback feedback and iterating on it. Looking over this entire roadmap, it seems Unity is on track with what they had said previously, which is they are going to have a stable version for more than one year, and they are slowly going to increment 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and add more features to this while they also build on Unity 7. And yeah, we are seeing this uh, in action. So which of these features are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments below. If I skipped over one that you liked, please let me know about it and what you liked about it. Yeah, and overall, I'm happy the direction Unity's headed. So let me know if you are too. I appreciate you stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.